Hello, STEAM team! It's so good to see you again. And if you are new here, my name is Kristen, and on STEAM Team Tuesdays, what it's all about is exploring the world around us with awesome activities and exciting experiments, all from the comfort of our own homes. You will probably notice that a lot of the items that we use are common items that you can find in your pantry, your fridge, or your cupboards, or anywhere else lying around your house. Do you know what day it is today? Well, today is February 2nd, which is Groundhog Day. It's the day when the famous groundhog here in Canada comes out of his winter hibernation to predict whether we're going to have six more weeks of winter or spring is just around the corner based on whether or not our groundhog sees its shadow. Now, I'm not sure how scientific this is. I'm going to have to look into that, but I do want to talk about hibernation. Our overall theme for February here on Steam Team Tuesdays is hibernation, adaptation, and winter weather. Today, we're going to be building a hibernation hut. And, whoa, Billy. So this is Billy the Bear. Basically what we're doing is we're going to create a hibernation hut, or you could think of it as a den or a cave, for an animal of our choosing to spend their long winter's nap. You could choose something small and cute like a ground squirrel, a prickly yet adorable hedgehog, or something more ferocious, even like a grizzly bear. It's all about bringing your own creativity and your own stamp into this. To hibernate means to spend the winter in a dormant state, or in other words, finding somewhere nice and cozy to settle down for a long winter's nap. So when animals hibernate, it's kind of like taking a long snooze. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I think it would be nice if humans were able to hibernate for a few months of the year also. So most animals actually start hibernation in the fall time, around October, and then they may come out of hibernation just as things start to thaw and it gets a bit warmer, so perhaps around March or April. And that's the point, is for them to be able to get through the winter staying warmer in their little home that they've built for themselves. So those are just a couple of little facts about hibernation. But for now, let's get into what we will need for this activity. The first two most important things that you will need for this activity, an animal to build your hibernation hut, hibernation home, cave, den for, and of course, as I already said, mine is Billy the Bear. You can use any kind of stuffed animal. You could use a little figurine of, an, of a forest animal that you have. You could even just draw and cut out on a piece of paper your favorite animal. Choose an animal that you would really love to build a home for. The second most important thing is your bringing your creativity, as I said. So please feel free to add more to this and really make it your own and you'll see some of the options right now as we talk through what we're going to need. You're going to need some sort of cardboard box. So when we're doing this today, we're going to be using a recycled Kleenex box, of course with all the Kleenex gone so it is hollow, but if you don't have one on hand at the moment that is free, there are many other things you can try. As with my sample, what I actually did, as you can see on the bottom where it's not painted, is I used a granola bar box that was emptied. So I cut the flaps off of this side to make a nice opening. Any kind of little box that you have, like maybe even a cereal box, and you could just cut off part of it so it isn't quite as long. But for the sake of this, as you can see, Billy can fit inside there, so that works. The main thing is you want to make sure that your animal can somewhat fit into your box. A lot of animals um, do actually prefer that the place where they're hibernating is a smaller space so that it can be more insulated and just keep them more warm. Bears may sometimes choose a larger kind of cave to sleep in. Next, and this part is actually optional, but you may want to paint your hibernation home 
so that it looks a bit more realistic. As you can see, the Kleenex box I have today is quite colorful, so I want to paint it a brown color as I did with this one. Now, if you don't have brown paint like me, I'm going to show you how you can mix a few different colors of paint. So you either need some brown paint if you wanna do this, or you can use um, like a combination of red, yellow, and blue, the primary colors, and maybe you could use some black or white, and we'll kind of play around with it and see if we can get a brown color that we're happy with. With that, you're gonna need some kind of sponge or paintbrush, um, a little mixing bowl. Next, you will need templates, if you would like, for making some leaves. This template for leaves, as well as a template that has branch, some branches and twigs on there, they are both available in the PDF activity guide that goes with this video, and you can find that on the library website under program handouts. So you can print those off and then color them however you wish. Once again, if you want to get more creative with this, you could actually draw your own leaves or branches or sticks, or you could even cut some out of felt, foam, construction paper, whatever you happen to have. So please Please feel free that you don't have to be just confined to using these templates, but if you would like to, they are there for you. So then of course you're probably going to want some kind of colored markers or pencil crayons to be coloring your templates with. And next you are going to want some scissors. Ask an adult for help if you need it, especially for things like cutting the cardboard boxes at the beginning. Then you will need some white glue. I found that for my sample, white glue did work very well, but if you're attempting to glue on some things that are maybe a little heavier or thicker, then you can also use a glue gun, once again with uh, the help of an adult. All right, well, we'll sit Billy back up there. You can lean there. There you go, Billy. And finally, you will need something like these cotton balls, and this is going to be creating the snow on our hibernation home to show that it is winter time. If you don't happen to have cotton balls like this, there are many other things that you could use that you may have around your house. Fluff or stuffing, white pom-poms, tissue paper. You could even use marshmallows if you really wanted to. So let's get onto the steps and get on to building our homes. We are actually going to be mixing some brown paint in case there are any of you out there like me who don't have brown paint on hand. If you do, of course you can skip this step and that makes it a lot easier. As you can see with my sample here, when I painted it, it was quite a dark brown color, almost more grayish. So I'm going to see if I can get it a little bit lighter this time. So first I'm going to do red as I ended up adding a lot more red last time, kind of to get that more warm brown. Then you also want quite a bit of yellow, especially if you want it if you're wanting to keep it lighter. So about the same as the red, or maybe even a bit more, but we'll start with that. A little bit of blue, and I'll leave out the black for now because we'll see what happens. So get yourself a little stir stick or a spoon, and let's start mixing. So far, yeah, definitely looking quite red. Whoa, but I'm I'm feeling a little bit happier with this color than last time. So I'm not sure if it's picking up on the camera, but it definitely is like a a ready brown. I'm just going to try adding a little more blue. Okay, we're just going to add just like a touch of the black. And again, if you want a darker brown, that's okay too. Before I start painting, I'm just going to put out some of this newspaper so as not to make a mess. Here is the paint. I got my sponge and let's start painting. You want to make your paint thick enough that it covers the box nicely but also not too thick so that you we don't have to wait too long for it to dry. I am just going to do the outside of the box but you are fully welcome to 
also paint some of the inside of the box if you want. On my sample box, I did paint just the inside ground floor because I had some extra paint and it just looked nicer. The trick is finding where to hold as you paint the next side and not get your hands too messy. Just covering up some of the glue here. Okay. So once you are satisfied with that, we're going to leave this to dry and work on the next step. Okay guys, thanks for bearing with me. And now, while it's off to the side to dry, we are going to work on making our leaves and basically the bedding that's going to go into the hibernation hat. So I have already colored a couple more of these templates. These are the leaves. Like I said, feel free to color them however you like. And this is the template that has some different branches. Now I'm just going to cut them out. Some tips here for cutting the leaves. I find it's easier to kind of just do a rough outline around each of the leaves first. Separate your leaves from each other first. Don't worry about it being perfect. And then you can work on the finer details. I'm also just going to show you kind of my method for cutting out these guys because there is a lot of detail here. Definitely not necessary to get into all that detail. I'm just going to go like this. And then on the top part here we can just kind of follow along with the outside edge of the branches. Same sort of thing for these guys. We're just going to follow along up this way with the leaves. And easy peasy! As you can see now, my tissue box has completely dried. I just want to do a quick review of what the first three steps were. So step one was to get ready whatever you're going to be using as the base for your hibernation hat. So that could be a tissue box, a granola bar box, any other sort of thin cardboard box. You can cut out as large as you would like the opening to be for whatever kind of animal you are planning to be building this home for. Then step two, which is an optional step, was to paint the tissue box or whatever else you might be using if it is not already brown or just if you would like to. And then step three was to, let me grab these here, was to cut out all the leaves and branches, which I have now completed. But just before we get into that part, for the sake of this video, I've decided it probably makes more sense if I cut this out more fully. And this would be probably easier to do before you paint it if you want to do this yourself. I'm just thinking now it'll be easier for you guys to see exactly what I'm putting in here and what I'm doing as I make the video. Okay, cool. I think that looks way better. And Billy could actually like sit right in there or lay down. <laughs> it really helps us to be able to kind of see in there better and really see what it looks like because in this one it is pretty dark and it's hard to see the beautiful artwork that you've made inside there. Just in case it was hard to see, here's a close-up look to what I did with the Kleenex box. I cut down these two edges and then I cut down these two so you could unfold that full flap and then just trim that off. So for step four, you probably want to bring out your newspaper again or whatever you were using just to protect the table. And then we are going to start gluing our leaves and branches into the hibernation hat. First off, I'm going to take some white glue and I'm just using the same little container that I used for the paint earlier, but I washed it out. I personally find it much easier to use a paintbrush with the glue and just paint that 
carefully on to the leaves. Actually, what I'm going to do is start first with the biggest pieces, like the branches. So the branches provide a really good base for the animals in their hibernation homes, huts, dens, <laughs> burrows. There are many different names for it. So I'm going to stick that down first. All you need is a thin layer of glue on there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up with putting all the branches first across the bottom. For the next part, we are going to start layering on some of the leaves. Leaves may seem pretty crunchy to us, especially if they're dry, but for an animal out in the forest, they're the part that really is going to make the softer, cozier part of the bed for them, which is why most of the time they likely layer the leaves on top of the branches and other more pokey things just to make a nice place to sleep. So kind of layer your leaves so that you can still see the branches poking out a bit if you'd like. And I found for me that one of each of the templates was a perfect amount of leaves and branches, but if you really wanna go for it and layer a bunch of them and make like a big pile of leaves, then go ahead and print off more or make more. As I said, make it your own. Now do not get rid of your glue and your paintbrush yet, as next we are going to be for step five, attaching the snow onto this. Remember again that there are many options of things you can use for your snow, but what I'm going to be using today are these fluffy cotton balls. And you really could stick them on here just as they are. Or if you want to make the snow look a little more fluffy, you can just kind of rip it apart a little bit. And then, yeah, you can see how that makes some nice snow. So again, it's up to you to how much of this you want to cover. You might get some of the fluff sticking to your paintbrush, and that's okay. But just lightly dab some of the glue on there, stick it on where you would like it. Feel free to kind of layer it on top of each itself as well to make the snow look a little bit more realistic. We are using some of our arts and crafting skills today, which are excellent skills to have and to hone in. Just finishing up putting some snow right along the bottom edge. As you may know, STEAM itself stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Maths. So it really covers a wide spectrum of things that we can explore and learn and play with and have fun with. Just be careful not to like get this stuck onto your newspaper or it may be difficult to get off when it's all dried. Da, 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 da. So there we have it, the finished hibernation home, which is still drying for me, and yours may also need to dry overnight, perhaps, before you put your animal in it. Whether you chose to make something like this with the opening in the top where you can see in with the bird's eye view, or if you chose to make something a little more like my sample here, I hope that you guys had as much fun as I did. Remix time! For a remix on this activity, I challenge you to build the bedding in your hibernation hut using only natural materials that you have collected outside. Go out and gather things like some leaves, pine needles that have fallen off the trees, pine cones even, moss, little twigs, little pebbles, really get creative and get a little wild with it and just see what you can come up with. 
Whether you decided to do the remixed version or the original version here, I would really love to see what you have designed and what you have come up with, so feel free to leave a photo for me in the comments below this video. And now let's talk about a couple of real world connections to go along with the activity that we did today. So as we now know, hibernation is one method that many animals use to help them survive the winter. But there are other ways that animals survive the winter, as of course not every animal chooses to hibernate, or that just isn't part of their adaptation. So can you think of any other th things that animals choose to do over the winter? I encourage you to look into some of this yourself and think about what maybe you have seen yourself even. But here's a couple examples. So birds, like geese for example, like to migrate south in the winter when it's colder and then they'll migrate back in the spring as the weather gets warmer here. Polar bears don't typically hibernate as, I mean, they're kind of used to that really cold arctic climate as it is. What they do is they make sure to eat more food so that they have more insulation to keep them warm and keep them going through that season. Animals like wolves and deer will stay awake and hunt or search for food. And they make sure to move around often so that they stay warm. Also, you may have noticed that you see deer in groups a lot and wolves may be in packs and when they huddle together, they can definitely keep warmer just through body temperature. And finally, one more. For some animals, their fur will actually change color during the winter, which is another survival strategy. It's an adaptation that can help these animals to blend in more with their environment, their surroundings. An example of this would be a fox. Um, some foxes, will their fur will turn white in the winter, and also some rabbits. Have you ever seen a little white rabbit running around? Sometimes into the spring, their fur is still white, and then they're really standing out. So today we learned what it means for an animal to hibernate, some of the kinds of animals that we may find hibernating, and we also built, of course, our own hibernation hut den or cave. We got to get really creative with designing exactly what we wanted to do to craft a cozy den fit for hibernation. Just like the one that I made for my friend Billy the Bear. Thank you so much for joining us today! And next week we'll be switching things up by learning about how snow forms and making our very own at home magical fluffy snow using only two ingredients. So it's pretty cool. It's literally, literally cool. For now, I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you again for joining me and bye for now, Steam Team.